Hello and welcome to this special edition of the program, AIT Infotech Network. And I am Bayero Agabi. To be part of the show, send us an email, bayero at aitinfotechnetwork.com, or text the number on your screen. For now, it's Tech News Update. For news, views, trends in ICT globally and in Africa in particular, watch AIT Infotech Network for the latest news and innovation in ICT for development in Africa. Plus, what technology can do for you from business to politics, tourism and culture. I am Bayero Agabi. You're welcome. from the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory all converged on Akure, the understate capital, for the second meeting of the National Council on Communication Technology, organized by the Federal Ministry of Communication Technology. While welcoming delegates to the conference, the permanent secretary in the ministry, Dr. Henry Ackman, observed that the focus of the meeting is leveraging information and communication technology for national development. I made the second meeting. Uh, it is our desire that we consolidate on the strides we've made in the industry since the November meeting which we had in Abuja in April last year. It's also important to reiterate that the policy trust of our government is to achieve the needed convergence of the various subsectors of the ICT industry and gear towards moving the country to a knowledge based economy. I want to re emphasize that this vision cannot be achieved without the cooperation and synergy of all the three tiers of government which this council sets for sure. Dr. Akwan added that the meeting is to deliberate on steps that need to be taken towards achieving the needed convergence of the various subsectors of the ICT industry targeted at moving the country into a knowledge-based economy. For us to consolidate on the achievements recorded so far, it is crucial for this meeting of officials being the technical arm of the NCC to conduct a very robust deliberation and recommend decisions which will translate the policies that will positively move the ICT industry forward. The adoption of the outcome of this meeting and its implementation by all relevant stakeholders, both at the federal and state government levels, I believe, will take the ICT industry to a higher level reduce the dependency on our dear country on oil and gas as a major source of revenue and make the industry a major creator of jobs and work. Making his presentation at the event, Acting Director General of NIDDA, Dr. Ashiri Daura, submitted that in view of the demand for skilled manpower in ICT in the public sector, that there should be special remuneration for IT professionals, adding that 2% of the annual state budgets be dedicated to ICT. Where well, remuneration has been to state's ability to attract and retain qualified IT personnel, while great ones are usually lost to organizations with better conditions of service. The Council is hereby like elected to approve one, that all states and local government areas collaborate with NETA on the development of the IT policy and establishment of the necessary institutional framework. And also other projects that come from time to time, which we need to collaborate in for success and implementation. Two, that steps allocate at least 2% of the annual budget the implementation of IT initiatives in all sectors. Three, that all FDAs at both federal and state levels commence implementation of the areas of the ICT 4D plan that are relevant to their mandates in collaboration with NIDA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To other participants at the event, 
they cannot be better prayers, as they all agree that the issue of retaining skilled IT professionals in the civil service is a major headache across all tiers of government. In Niger, we have established the ICT cadre in the civil service. But the challenge we are facing is what the presidential right to be observed. Most of the times, after taking your officers through several training stages, the next thing you see them with is a the very great officer, but I'm going to the cleaner officer. So every day, every month, you see us searching for officers that will handle the issue of ICE. So I strongly also concur that there is need for this council to indirect or auditate also to have a specialized remuneration package for IT personnel in the civil service. At the end of the six-day deliberation, it is hoped that the Council will give an approval for the establishment of institutional structure for the coordinated approach to the implementation of ICT programs in the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. Francisca Nanna reporting for AIT Infotech Network. This is AIT Infotech Network, reaching you from a free town in Sierra Leone. Accra, the Ghanaian capital. Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Johannesburg in South Africa. We are in Cairo in Egypt. In Tunis, the Tunisian capital. Cape Town in South Africa. Reaching you from Dubai. Hanover in Germany. Live from Chicago. Las Vegas in the United States of America. Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. We are in Beijing, China. In London, England. AIT Infotech Network, bridging the digital divide. Google Incorporated has launched its YouTube program in Nigeria. The program which is aimed at giving Nigerians opportunities to explore the benefits of the internet is also expected to place the country on higher pedestal among emerging markets. Indeed, when the local YouTube domain was launched in Nigeria in 2011, no one could have guessed the amount of impact it would make. From musical videos to how to do it yourself clips, short movies, Nigerians have been generating some of the most creatively diverse content on YouTube. And to further support local creators, the YouTube Partner Program has now been extended to Nigeria. This means that Nigerian YouTube users are now going to be able to make money on their videos and gain access to resources and programs that can help them expand to a larger audience. So whether you're a banker, who dreams of moonlighting as a comedian or a young animator working on animation series or a seasoned makeup artist looking to showcase her talent to a wider audience. The YouTube Partner Program provides an opportunity for you to share to a worldwide audience and earn money doing so. As part of efforts to live up to its promise of making businesses run better, SAP, an enterprise application software, recently hosted a revenue management summit with stakeholders on boosting internally generated revenue by over 200% year-on-year with modern technology. The summit detailed participants on tax and revenue management important to stimulate economic growth. SAP is at the center of today's technology revolution, developing innovations that not only help businesses run like never before, but also improve the lives of people everywhere. Speaking at the summit, Managing Director of SAP West Africa, Richard Edet, said tax and revenue management is of tremendous importance, and SAP provides organizations with better insight into business operations more quickly.
for a better internet experience in Nigeria. Internet Solutions, the region's connectivity provider, has connected the country to the West Africa Cable System, WACS, with plans to light up Ghana soon. According to the Chief Executive Officer of Internet Solutions, Olushola Teniola, hooking up Nigeria with a huge population of over 160 million people to the WACS would have tremendous impact on the nation's economy. As this offers Internet Solutions clients greater diversity up the West African coast as it complements existing SAT-3 capacity. What we brought to Nigeria is essentially an ability to connect all the multinational corporations um, and also the uh, large number of banking um, banks, uh, those that are sitting in the financial sectors as well as the insurance companies. We also reached out to some of the large conglomerates and corporates of Nigerian businesses as well. Okay. And they sit across not only our data center products, but also our VSAT and terrestrial connectivity, as well as some new initiatives like fiber to the building. Since 2001, users across the world have leveraged the Windows XP to enhance productivity. But 12 years on, Microsoft says it is end of cycle for the Windows XP operating system. Acting country manager of Microsoft Nigeria in a press conference in Lagos explains this. Come April 8th, 2014, Microsoft will no longer support Windows XP and Office 2003. And the implication of that, what, I mean, the question is going to be, so what will happen? XP will continue to run on your PCs. However, you won't be able to get security patches, security updates. What does that mean for the customer or for the user of that particular device or PC? The person would not be able to update the security patches, which means you're, ham you're, you're open to malware, you're open to spyware, your, your PC can be infected, as the case may be, but your XP might continue to run, but it's not secure. Now users have options on the Microsoft platform that works even better, especially in tune with the dynamics of the technology ecosystem. We have you know, released an improvement solution such that with Windows 8, we can now talk of solutions that meet what the customers are asking for today. The customers are asking for you know, more secure, more productive ways. People want to be able to use devices anywhere they go. People want to be able to work wherever they are. Customers, consumers want to be able to be productive and be able to consume services from the customers irrespective of the location, not tied to a place. So, working anywhere on any device, wherever you are, concept are part of the things that are key to, to what we have in Windows 8 today, and that's the part of the product we're talking about. And to Microsoft, it is the same experience for customers, and no special training is required to migrate. Chinese telecoms equipment and security solutions vendor ZTE said the National Public Service Communication System project that was awarded to it by the Nigerian government has been completed and handed over to help check rising security challenges in the country. This was disclosed in Lagos at a media parley with ICT editors. What we can provide you with information is that from the technical perspective, the project you know, has been awarded to ZTE since 2010, end of 2010. And the project has started implementation since 2011. The project has been successful delivered since 2012. This is how the project has been implemented. And the, the other thing is that this project is not a CCTV project. This project is not a CCTV project. You know that why we are talking about CCTV is because the cameras being placed in Abuja and Lagos are the much more visual thing. People notice this easily. However, what we provide for this project is an integrated communica secure, secure communication platform for the Nigeria uh, security agencies. According to ZTE, the firm built an ultra-modern security apparatus for the government, adding that the project was of the same standard with what it had done in other parts of the world, including China, its home country. Actually, 
after you know this project, this kind of security project, Ziggy has already been uh, implemented such kind of project all around the world, more than 40 countries. It's not only Nigeria. And we have this kind of successful cases all around the world. So they, uh, and they probably just like what I mentioned before, you know, we did not quite talk too much since it's, you know, it's security and we do not want to release you know, if it is not, you know, it's the confidentiality from this kind of issues. The project has about 700 BTS as one of its major components, and this is expected to provide a platform for the whole country. Daily, the world evolves from business to domestic, from research to technology. Growth has remained unstoppable. AIT Infotech Network has also grown. Now you can post your comment, views and pictures and stories. Answer a runny quiz and win prizes plus. Keep up with happenings in ICT globally. Just log on to www.aitinfotechnetwork.com. Click my view to post your comment, stories and pictures. Or click quiz to answer a runny quiz. For details, send your emails to bayeragabi at aitinfotechnetwork.com. AIT Infotech Network, bridging the digital divide. Hello and thanks for joining us on the interview segment of your favorite program, AIT Infotech Network. And today we are taking a look at the proliferation of technology hubs across Africa. According to reports, there are about 60 or more of them. And in Nigeria, we have a co-creation hub. Today, we'll be taking a look at um, what the center is all about, how it is helping young IT innovators to harness their potentials and commercialize their ideas. Joining me in this chat is Tunji Elesho of Co-Creation Hub. Tunji, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. What to you is new about Africa in terms of technology innovation when we take a look at a few years back? I mean, things that are here today that were not here in a few years back. In the last two, three years, we've seen an explosion in, in, in involvement of youth in, in technology. Uh, and, and to a large extent, I would say it's, it's largely because we're having uh, a band of youth now who are educated and who are interested in, in, in solving problems that exist in their localities. Uh, and you know, we're having a lot more exposed youth, and what that means is that if people are now coming together, harnessing their creativity and strength in, in creating those solutions. I mean, there are challenges everywhere, right across the continent, be it in health, in education, in infrastructure. And what we're having is people who are determined and saying, yes, we can do something about this. Uh, technology appears to be a way that can leapfrog development. And so we're having all those come together, and then the power of mobile telephony uh, and the ubiquity of mobile telephony. All that has come together to, to create this move or this wave. What exactly do you intend to achieve, or what was at the back of your mind when you guys were setting up Co Creation Hub? For us, the goal was how can we harness all the creativity uh, that exists in Nigerians, both at home and in diaspora? How can we harness that all? using technology to solve the problems that we face every day uh, as citizens, be it in traffic, be it in education, in healthcare, in, in agriculture. How can we use what we already have? Because Nigerians are very smart, Nigerians are very creative. How can we get all that energy in one place to then solve problems? That's, that's literally what, what the, the, how we came about. Did you have the mechanisms required to run this place, say funding, infrastructure, and all of that? The interesting thing with us at CC Hub is, before we set up this space, this space was set up in September of 2011. Uh, at the beginning of 2011, January, we decided to test our methodology uh, by having uh, the first iteration, what we call uh, a hackathon. Uh, what that did for us was, in many ways, helped us to seek support from, from partners. Um, who are our partners till today? Uh, very early in the process, we helped we engage them, and they were able to see in, in real life what what the import and what the possibilities and opportunities were with with a concept like this. Uh, we held it at the, at the Lagos Business School, uh, where we brought people together to then create uh, interesting web and mobile prototypes to solve problems. Uh, and so we had people like Mainwan Cable Company, um, who 
were a very big part of that program. We had Opera Software, we had the Indigo Trust, and what, what this helped them to do was see what we were trying to achieve, uh, see the power in what we were trying to do, and, and help them then get involved with what we are doing. So we, we're enjoying immense support from you know, very big organizations like the Media Network. What is the level of government's involvement in co-creation of? We started out looking at governance and, and how citizens can bridge the gap between government you know, and, and, and common man on the street. And, and what that helped us do was you know, harness the power of citizens um, and certain interesting applications grew out of that. Uh, as an organization, we are interested in, in impacting our environment. And, and what we've seen is that has helped government to be able to engage with us in, in a very interesting, proactive way. And so government involvement has been very interesting. Um, a, a project called the Lagos Innovation Hotspots Project, which essentially is just mapping the innovation assets uh, across Lagos State. We're doing that in, in conjunction with the Lagos Innovation Advisory Council and with, the, uh, with DFID, uh, Department for International Development of the, of the United Kingdom. And we've had immense support from them. Uh, there's this project we're also trying to uh, put together now called the IHQ, which in, in many ways is turning Herbert Papali and Yaba into into a silicon lagoon, as the case may be. And we're also enjoying very good support from, from the Lagos Innovation Advisory Council, the Lagos State Government, and and also from uh, the Federal Ministry of Communications Technology. And so, in many ways, once you can demonstrate that you are doing something that is very positive and, and has the potential to impact the you know, your environment, then the government will definitely be interested. What does it take to belong here? Because um, you see, there are so many young people out there who would like to be part of this community. What exactly does it take to be a part of co-creation The CCOB is a member-driven space. Um, and so what we do typically is uh, attract people who, who are passionate about technology. Right now, we have a community of over 1,500 individuals and, and organizations, um, all interested in the application of technology and how that can solve social problems. And what we do is, uh, through our website, we have a simple uh, application process membership form where we get people to then tell us about themselves uh, and seek to become uh, a member of, this, of the corporation hub. What we then do as a management is sit down and have a, an interview with each person just to understand what their motivations are, understand what their use of technology has been, and understand what they're trying to achieve, uh, whether it's in form of an idea or you know, interesting collaborations that they're interested in. Uh, and then, based on that, we then accept members into, into the space. Uh, it's only been 18 months, um, and, and we've, we've seen a lot of interest from, from the community, both far and wide. Do you see a future in um, the concept of technology? Oh yes, most definitely. Um, I mean, all, all the various ingredients are, are coming to play at the right time uh, to, to in, in, in many ways, create that culture of technology. Um It's a skill. Uh, and what, what we then need to do as an environment is to grow and, and, and in many ways grow that ecosystem of, of, of people who then want to take this as a career. What do you think is government's role in ensuring that these guys go beyond or get more um, training impacted in them in a conventional institution? For us, the government um, has a very key role to play um, with creating the right environment. Um, having policies that promote entrepreneurship and promote innovation and technology innovation. What about the schools? Um, so with the schools, uh, I mean, it's, it's, there, there's a need to, in many ways, radically transform the curriculum in schools. Um, because, to a large extent, when the students are coming into the world, or into the market, to then solve problems that exist here, they need to be well equipped. And they need to, you know, be in a position where they understand how to solve these problems. Because the world is a dynamic world; it keeps moving. Our needs five, ten years ago, you know, maybe the same in in in, in, in background, in foundation, but has grown in, in many ways. So, critically, we need to ensure that what the universities are delivering to the kids or to the students are things that are relevant in today's market. Thank you very much. Thank you.